Welcome to the Political Trenches, Local Government at Work. Our guest today is Union of Municipalities, New Brunswick Executive Director, Dan Murphy. Dan is a dedicated leader with extensive experience in both government and nonprofit sectors, focused on building strong communities. As the Executive Director of the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick, he advocates for the priorities of 57 member municipalities. Before this role, Dan held senior positions with federal and provincial ministers and served as Executive Director of the New Brunswick Nonprofit Housing Association. He also volunteers as treasurer of the Housing Hub of New Brunswick and serves on the New Brunswick College of Pharmacists Public Committee. Dan holds degrees from St. Thomas University and Carleton University, which I will not hold against him as a Queen's University alumni, and resides currently in Fredericton, New Brunswick. With that, Dan, welcome to the Political Trenches. Yeah, thanks, folks. Pleasure to be here. Uh, Dan, I'm going to kick off the line of question with a very important one. In your opinion, as executive director of your organization, what do you see as the state of municipalities in the province of New Brunswick today? Um, I think it's a it's a transitional time still, I think is how I would describe where we're at. There's lots of excitement, lots of challenges. Um, but, uh, you know, state of local government is that we're 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 the ones who are making things happen. Um, and with the right supports and the right uh, and the right policy changes, we think we can do a heck of a lot more to benefit uh, the province and its citizens. So I'll I'll jump in now if that's okay. And well, I, the government of New Brunswick instituted some sweeping changes in municipal structures in New Brunswick not that long ago. I think they took effect as of the last municipal election. And now that there's been a little bit of time for the dust to settle, how are changes working out? And for those people who don't know, what were some of the changes that happened? Sure. So, so the uh, the provincial government here in New Brunswick embarked on a uh, local governance reform process. It's something that our sector has been advocating for 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 many decades to see happen. Um, so we went from about 340 entities down to 77 municipalities plus uh, 12 rural districts. Um, so, you know, some, a lot of, you know, one, two, three, four communities coming together, um, and trying to, to make things work. Um, so it's been, um, it's been a challenging time for a lot of folks, a lot of new counselors, first time I've ever been sitting on a council because they're from areas that never had any, any local governance representation. Um, so in some cases, uh, you know, things are going well. Um, some communities are really starting to build a new identity for their new their new municipality and are coming together uh, collectively. Uh, other communities is taking a little bit more time, which I think is a normal sort of process whenever you're going through some kind of change. So we're um, just there trying to provide support where we can. And, uh, you know, we're, we're gearing up, I guess, for uh, our next round of municipal elections. We're at, a, at the midterm mark now. So 2026 will be... Uh, May 2026 is the next round. So trying to to work towards that too. Well, I want to continue on this line of questioning about this. Uh, I, I hate to use the most nastiest word in municipal politics, but amalgamation process. Um, back in 2010, Manitoba went through the exact same thing that New Brunswick did. And I speak to municipal leaders across this country. And the one thing I hear from Manitoba uh, leaders is there's still concerns almost 14 years later about how the process went. And some municipalities just don't feel like they are still that one entity. Do you get a sense in New Brunswick that even though your own personalities are split, you're they're coming together as one municipality to work for the common good. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to take some time. It's you know we're only two years into this this process, um, so you know we got to we got to take the time it takes. Um, like some folks are going to get it, and other folks is going to take a little a little bit of time. We had a, a board member I think one time tell us, um, you know we we had a municipal reform kind of process go on back in ninety five or ninety six. Um, and I think of, um, you know, there's a couple communities that came together and the community of Miramichi is one of those city of Miramichi, um, prior to Miramichi, there was Douglas town, there's Chatham head, uh, Chatham, Doug, or, uh, Newcastle, there's a whole pile of communities. And for a certain generation, it's always going to be, I'm from Newcastle, I'm from Chatham, I'm from here. Um, but for, you know, the younger generation, it's well, I'm from Miramichi. So there's probably going to be some of that here in New Brunswick, I imagine, too, that, you know, it's going to take a generation for people to maybe adopt that they're from Heron Bay or that they're from Five Rivers or they're from Tantramar as opposed to Sackville kind of thing. 
Um, but I, I don't think that necessarily prevents folks from working together in the best interest of, of trying to make things happen for the community. And I think preserving those old uh, line communities is just a normal thing that we want to do as at least as it's a very maritime thing to do to retain your hometown identity. And I don't see that. Uh, I don't see that necessarily changing nor would we want it to. Uh, there's there's an interesting uh, election that is happening or has already happening happened depending on when you're listening to this episode in the province of New Brunswick. Uh, with that as a backdrop, you recently the organization just held their annual fall convention as well. Um, what advocacy platforms and pillars will the organization be focused on? heading into the future because you you have a provincial election on the horizon you have uh the uh the, the advocacy work that municipalities need to do over the next two years before the next municipal election what is in the forefront for the union so for us the big priority the biggest priority i would say is the the completion of the municipal reform process so we've 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 done the structural work but we haven't fixed the financial components um, and the structural change that we need for a new fiscal framework in New Brunswick. So I would say that's our that's our top priority. Um, you know, we had a report that we released earlier this fall uh, that we did in partnership with Craig Brett from Mount Allison. Um, you know, pointing out a, a two hundred million dollar annual gap in municipal funding. So that's going to be our first and foremost thing of trying to get uh, that addressed. And it's been what we've been working on throughout the election to get parties to commit to it. And all, all three parties have committed to implementing some level of fiscal reform. Um, we don't quite know what the details of those are yet, but that's going to be for us after the election on, you know, whatever, whatever you watch this, I guess we'll be working on getting, uh, getting that uh, in the hands of whoever the government is to make sure that we continue to make that progress. Do you see the, the timing is actually really interesting for this conversation because we were talking about elections in general, just as, uh, as a topic before we, we, well, we, we will a little bit later on. And um, do you see the role, how do you see the role differing for the association versus the individual municipalities in terms of advocacy efforts, uh, looking collectively versus individually? Yeah, I think what we're trying to do, and, and one of the things we did this year, which is which is new for us, is we, we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Association, Association Francophone des Municipalités, um, so our sister organization um, to advocate collectively as with one voice on fiscal uh, reform. So uh, trying to leave less space to be divided um, and trying to represent the best interests of all municipalities and making sure that we get a get a, an agreement that works for, you know, cities like it works for villages and, and, and towns. So we're trying to, to do that collectively. And I think that um, we need to do it from a central voice with with the input and support, obviously, of our members helping us push that on the ground, which they've been really good at doing this uh, this electoral uh, cycle. Speaking of uh, bilingualism, if I may, New Brunswick being the only bilingual, officially bilingual province in the country, does that have an impact on either you or on how local governments operate? Um, it does in certain cases. So we we are a bilingual association. We have members uh, that are primarily anglophone, members that are francophone, and then members who would, would provide services in both languages. Um, there is a requirement in, in New Brunswick on local governments. I think it's twenty percent. If you're over twenty percent of a of a language group, that you have to offer services in both languages. So um, that certainly has a you know has has an impact on service delivery for sure. So making sure that your you know your bylaws are in English and French, and that you can offer service uh, in both languages. So um, and that's something that with again with the local governance reform has impacted you know a number of communities who before may not have been close to the threshold that now are because of the way that the communities have come together. But uh, generally for us, um, you know, we view that as a strength in our association that people can come and bring both perspectives of both linguistic communities and have those conversations in one in one space um, while offering, you know, interpretation so that people can feel comfortable speaking in the language of their choice um, and that everyone can understand one another. So that's an important part for us. I want to talk about the broader context of council and administration for a few seconds, if you don't mind. Um, we are seeing, and I say that as the Ian and I, we've been doing this show for almost two years now. We're seeing a change in apathy when it comes to municipal elections and even councils. More and more small rural communities, even councils in general, are being acclaimed. Is 
the job of counsel a desirable position in New Brunswick, or are you seeing uh, a change in attitude towards it? Um, that's a <laughs> that's the million dollar question, I guess. Um, you know, in some places, I'd say there's a lot of interest. Um, in other places, not so much. Um, you know, it's becoming increasingly, you know, challenging. And I think, you know, when you look at just the social media world that we live in, people feel less, um, I guess, shame and remorse to say things that you'd never say to someone in person. And that can make the job really difficult um, when people are are being, you know, quite abusive and quite, uh, you know, disrespectful in how they go about it. So, um, you know, if you're a younger person, if you're, you know, someone who wants to do things for certain reasons, like, why would you sign up to get, you know, to get basically, you know, made fun of and ridiculed. So I think we've got some work to do um, in New Brunswick on how we deal with harassment of councils and councillors and mayors. I know other provinces have taken some action on that. I think that's probably going to be something we're going to dig into in the, in the year, in the year to come. Um, Cause I think that's one of the things that we would see why people aren't getting involved um, is partially is just the, you know, the, the things that the, the negative parts that come along with it. And then I don't always think we do a great job of selling the benefits of being on council either. Um, you know, I, I've, as you mentioned in the bio, I've worked federal, I've worked provincial, I've worked, worked municipal now, and um, no one is getting involved in municipal politics to like to make a living. It's because they want to help their communities grow. They want to support, you know, the places that have supported them. Um, so I think there's a really great message about the difference you can make as a, as a community leader that I think we can do a better job of selling. And on the flip side of that, from an administration standpoint, I, I often look at the municipal jobs across Canada and it seems like there isn't that big of a turnover from the job postings that I see in the province of New Brunswick. Are people comfortable in the administration roles? Because we're seeing in Ontario and even here in Alberta where we're recording this, that the administration has become put under more scrutiny than it was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I would say that there's certainly some challenges around that front. Um, you know, we've got a great group of administrators who work, you know, closely with our administrators association. Um, you know, and I think one of the things that we could do to better support, um, you know, better support our administrators and our councils is continue to, to offer ongoing training and ongoing professional development around roles and responsibilities and who's supposed to be doing what, because it, it often gets confused. Um, and in some communities, sometimes that's just a, you know, it's a function of your size, right? That if you're a small community, a counselor may want to get more involved in operations or the mayor may want to get more involved in operations because that's the only way something gets done, but it's important to remind everyone of, of how it's supposed to work and why it's set up the way it is. Uh, so that everyone can have clarity and be protected and be respected in the jobs that they're doing. So, um, yeah, I, like I said, it's it's not it's not perfect out here by any means. I think there's still some work to do, but um, you know, we've we've got a great group of folks um, on the administrative side for sure. Yeah. Well, my obvious to this is you all should read my book, uh, "Who's Driving the Greater," about uh, role clarity. It's a shameless plug at the moment. The to, to transition a little bit more broadly, potentially. Uh, you have a series of colleagues around Atlantic Canada. Is there much work that happens collectively? <clears throat> Do you learn from one another or work with one another in the Atlantic provinces in the role of municipal associations? Yeah, a hundred percent. We work, um, you know, back before I started, there was an MOU that was signed between uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI and Newfoundland. Um, so I get together with my colleagues at NSFM and FPEIM and MNL on a fairly regular basis and we share best practices and, try to work together on, on certain projects. Um, you know, I think back to a, a few years back in the last federal election, we put out sort of a series of Atlantic asks around what we thought we could look at for the federal election. So that's one of the things that we've done in the past, um, you know, certainly looking at how we can support each other going forward. We, we invite each other to each other's conferences. Um, and, you know, we try to get together at least, you know, once every couple of months to kind of go through things. Uh, in New Brunswick, again, the AFMNB and UMNB, we work really closely together and often take sort of ideas from each other to implement at our own events mm -hmm. um, and our own work. So, um, and really that's the case nationally, like the the group of PTAs across the country are really supportive of one another. And um, whether you're in Alberta or in Saskatchewan or in New Brunswick, we all, we all know we can count on one another, which is kind of part of the fun part of this job is that it is a very collegial um, atmosphere. So it's great. 
But I don't think anybody goes to school to get a degree in how to manage a municipal association of any sort. So what's your path? What? How did you end up here uh, personally as, uh, with the association? Uh, it's a, it's kind of a funny, kind of a funny story. Um, so I grew up with UMNB, um, not really where I thought I would land. Um, my, my father was a past president of the union. Um, he was executive director for 15 years. Um, so there was a person in between my dad and I in this role. Um, and I, this was not even on my radar until, um, my predecessor encouraged me to apply and, and I, I did and. I've been having a great time since, but um, I grew up around local government, you know, and again, I go back to executive director, president, he was also mayor of my hometown of Brexton. Um, so after school, I used to get my bus dropped me off at the town hall. That's where he picked me up. So like I kind of hung around with the village office staff. Um, so that's where, that's where I kind of got, I got it from. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I ended up. And then with a bunch of nonprofit experience, otherwise it's, uh, it's been a great ride. Um, and I really, I really enjoy the work and the people that I get to work with. Are, um, are, is membership in the association voluntary? Yes, it is. What's the value proposition? Because very, I don't know if any municipal, any municipal association has all the potential members. What's the value proposition for joining? So for us, I guess it's a couple things. It's, um, it's the network, you know, the network, I think, is the big piece, the ability to come forward, ch share ideas, share best practices um, and how we learn. Um, it's the work that we do in advocacy. I think we've really stepped up our advocacy over the last couple of years that I think we're, we're really starting to, to be the, the voice of influence on municipal affairs in New Brunswick. Um, and then, you know, again, we're getting increasingly into service provision. So things that we can offer our members um, to help them do their jobs, um, you know, more effectively. So whether that's, you know, like another number of our colleagues, like the canoe procurement program that we put in place or, you know, a new insurance program or, um, you know, some, some partnerships with eScribe and HR providers, things that can help them better affect their 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 um their day to day so yeah it's um that's our sort of value proposition and I think again being that um for us it's the only place in, in New Brunswick where you're going to be able to see English French big uh, small north south like we we cover the full basis so we think there's a lot of value in that unifying approach too. Before we wrap up, I have one final question. We always look to the future in our last question on the show, so municipalities are all about metrics. It's about putting in place a metric to try to achieve. So for the organization, for you, what's the metric that you're putting in place for the organization? So if we come back and I say, Dan, let's sit down in one year's time, five years time and 10 years time. What are the metrics that you're putting into place to get done in the, that in the, into the future? Sorry. You mean like in terms of like, what are like the overall objectives or terms of how are we going to measure that? The overall objectives for the organization. Um, so I guess the sort of two things, if I had to look in terms of the year um, ahead for us, um, I guess I'll give you one internal and one external sort of objective sort of that we're looking at. Um, obviously, continued progress on fiscal reform. That's kind of the number one advocacy piece. So to see that uh, get completed right now, the, the schedule date is, is to be in place for January 1, 2026. Um, so we want to keep the pressure on that. That's the sort of external piece that, you know, if, if we accomplish that um, in a meaningful way, I think that would be sort of certainly successful for, for our sector and for our organization. Um, internally, um, it's, it's the governance process for us. So um, we, we last year, the cities of New Brunswick Association merged into UMNB. Um, so that's necessitated, necessitated a lot of changes on our end. So we've got to you know, update our governance structure, update our board structure, update how we make decisions and how we represent our members. So um, it's it's a, it's an exciting time for the nerds in the room because governance is always fun to look at. Um, but um, yeah, so that's the other piece. I think, you know, if I could come back here January 1, 2026 and say, hey, look, we've got this great, you know, new clear decision making process. Um, you know, we know how our members are engaging in our association. Um, I think that would be, look, I could do both those things. I'd be really, really happy in terms of overarching goals. 
you nerds in New Brunswick and Saskatchewan just love to change your governance structure of your organization. Shout out to John Mark on that one. Um, I, I can't believe I didn't ask this question, but we, we mentioned it earlier on, but uh, your outgoing president, Andrew Black, uh, is no longer president, and now you have President Brittany Merrifield. Uh, what, what's your relationship with like the new incoming president, and how do you expect her to put her stamp on the organization? Yeah, um, I've been lucky um, to have both um, both Mayor Black and Mayor Merrifield on on my board since I've pretty much been in the job. Um, so they're both they're both uh, both champions for our sector. Um, you know, I'd say uh, Andrew in particular really oversaw a huge period of change for us. Um, a lot of leadership to to bring us to where we are now. So so certainly um, he's got some big shoes to fill, but. Um, Brittany herself is an incredible leader um, and has um, really has taken the time to get to know the issues. And when she shows up to meetings, she's very impactful. She knows she knows the sector and is very uh, close with her colleagues um, and I think is going to um, really uh, work to more professionalize the organization than we already are. We've been working on becoming a more professional um, outfit and what we do our work and I think that um, it's just going to keep getting better with uh, with Mayor Maryfield's um, leadership. Um, tomorrow's are actually our first meeting to kind of go through and start plotting out what we want to see in the next uh, in the next uh, couple of years of her mandate. So it's uh, it's exciting times. There's a lot of really great uh, opportunities that I think uh, she's going to certainly chart us towards. Dan, from both Ian and myself, we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your business schedule to sit down and do this interview. Oh, thank you guys. Much appreciated.